Hi YouTube, welcome to another video. Today I'm gonna give you a few things that you can do in Throne of Liberty every single day. A few activities that are really important that are gonna help you progress in the game and that it will give you good stuff. So with that being said, let's get straight to it and I'll show you what things and what things you should do, what things you should actually focus on early on in the game and do these activities every single day. Number one, you need to do your daily contract. And there is two locations that are really good for the contracts once you hit level 50. One of them is Watcher's Post, the other one is in Pure Light Tower. And I'll show you what kind of, um, you know, contracts you want to be looking for, right? So let's talk about the contracts very quickly. Those are daily activities that you can do. And in, in fact, that's not just daily. You can do them every time you just have enough contract rights to accept these contracts. You get 10 every day and you can have accepted maximum five. So once you... You know sort that out you figure out okay i can accept only five um over here now let's talk about what are the contracts that you should prioritize now based on the materials that you need honestly and over here if you just mouse over you will see that the green stones are used to craft accessory growth stones the red ones are for weapons and the blue ones are um, for skill books for example and you also get the ma these material chests which are also pretty neat and you'll need them down the road anyways um, another currency that the contracts gives you is the Ab abyssal contract token points i'll talk about this in a minute so the most important thing when you're doing your contract is you want efficiency obviously so that's why i do recommend again sticking to two locations uh when you're doing your your contract here is the shattered temple that i am always uh, in most cases uh, running here you just need to grind the skeletons most of the time and yeah i i tend to i tend to switch between uh phonos and shattered temple uh, just to mix it up and yeah, but those are pretty straightforward you go you have them highlighted the mobs that you need to kill One of the things that is actually good about the contracts is that they are the same every single time So you get super used to doing these and you'll know immediately Where the locations are for the items that you need to either destroy or pick up and you will get super efficient also a good interesting thing about these contracts is that you will end up doing and getting a lot of Toland, which is the in-game gold, uh, by completing those contracts. Roughly, each contract will give you about 75k um, Solent, which is amazing. All right, the second activity that is really important, and I highly recommend doing this, is uh, grinding your open world dungeons. Now, let's talk about for a second what are these open world dungeons. Before I uh, give you a few tips and tricks about the open world dungeons, let me actually show you where these are located. So early on in the game, the first uh, that will unlock for you uh, via the milestones is going to be Ant's Nest. Uh, over here, you will probably enter there without even realizing that that's an open world dungeon in the beginning but my advice is focus on open world dungeons once you hit level 50 don't don't waste your time before that your goal is to get to level 50 as soon as possible and you can do that for probably five to six hours if you focus on the main quest and so on however let's talk about where the locations of these open world dungeons so we have ants nest this is one of the plays just a hint that i can give you over here you can always click on the different type of mobs over here when you click on monster info and you can check what kind of items they drop the reason why i'm telling you that you need to do open world dungeons is that they drop a lot of materials specifically parchments specifically these stallones and rare materials that are used for crafting growth stones and skill books you get different variety uh, of materials from those different dungeons and mobs but this is one of the main reason this is one of the fastest way for you to get enough materials to craft your skill box you need to get your skills to level uh, to purple as soon as possible the biggest impact on your damage is going to be once you hit your skills and make them purple the other dungeon is going to be temple of silhouette this was particularly my first favorite dungeon even here because night time, PvP time. And in here I had so much fun um, having my first PvP encounters in the game. I really, really enjoyed this one. Uh, but I obviously transitioned to the more difficult ones. And the more difficult one would be Cilius Abyss, which is over here almost in the middle of the map. 
This one has a few interesting things about it. It has currently four available levels, so you can go down in the temple, um, in the dungeon itself, and also and later on for the for the free to play folks that started uh, in the free to play servers. In a few days, once uh, the chapter three, I believe, of your milestone unlocks, it will unlock Cornelius, which is the world boss. Uh, this guy drops SNS and other stuff. However, it has different levels available, and over here you can just go and grind these levels. Uh, the different levels obviously will have different rewards and items in it. It is a higher end, um, you know, already I recommend this at level 50. Go there, grind there. One thing to note is you cannot enter during the night. Um, it closes up so you can enter during the day. At night it will turn into a PvP zone and if somebody kills you, if you get ganked by a group, you will get ported out and you won't be able to be in there anymore. It is a good, great, uh, a good place to grind for your materials. Now the next one that unlocked for us yesterday is actually the best slot for the mid to late game grinding and this is going to be the shadow crypt um, right now this one is um, just so many people over there it's crazy at night time obviously it turns into a pvp zone and in here the cool thing about it is that you know the elites over there they actually drop epic items already and that's why everybody is going crazy as well over here you can experience and you can work on these allied resistant contracts which which have these pouches um, and these pouches obviously can also drop you these epic items which is really good right so those are the few op open dungeons keep in mind that you need the abyssal contract tokens uh, in order to grind there and don't waste them so if you're at 20k go and spend them as soon as possible and one last tip that i can give you go to your guild contract check out which rates do you guys have for today for example we have temple of silhouette uh today that means that i want to go there and help out the guild complete that also get my contribution in there this is going to give me some rewards and we're going to get a lot of experience in the guild for completing this very quickly just to show you what a dungeon looks like this is Celius is abyss uh in the on the fourth level uh, the reason why i wanted to show you this is just to showcase you that you know the mobs are actually pretty tanky and it's really beneficial for you to run in a group those are my guild mates yesterday i just pinked a few of them and i asked if somebody wants to run these and they immediately jumped in so i do highly recommend ask your guild hey does anyone want does anybody want to run these dungeons together? Yes or no? If there's nobody available, don't sweat it too much. Just go and teleport uh, to the dungeon. Most cases, there will be always a party running around there. Just ask them to get invited and they'll shoot you invite 99% of the time. Unless it's nighttime and they will PvP with you. So over here, just go grind you'll get your materials you'll spend your tokens and it's just a fun time a fun activity that you can do in a group and yeah just don't waste your time doing it solo like i said it's not gonna be as efficient and you are gonna have a rough time um you know staying alive and and being efficient so just run in a group have fun and good luck with your jobs all right, and one of the other activities that you can do on a daily basis and you should pay attention to is the weekly missions. Now, weekly missions will reset every week on Wednesday and you will um, have basically these missions right here that we have are exactly the same ones as last week. Um, and I assume they will just um, repeat. You have PvP missions, guild activities, co-op dungeons and world Activities. Now, as you can see, I was able to complete almost every single one except the dungeon one. Uh, there was just not enough, you know, options for us to complete these um, since early access had some terrible server issues the first three days. Um, so I wasn't able to complete this, but this week I'll make sure that I get my guild contracts considering that the rewards are actually pretty juicy so over here it will stay grayed out you'll click on the reward it will be a random reward every time so as you can see now i do have the option for this week to choose between one of those epic uh, gears 
or the trade unlock zones now i'm very tempted to take the trade unlock zones but i also still need purple and epic gear and most likely i'll either take uh, the bracers or the ring uh, something that is going to increase my item power and make me more strong so these activities are super easy the pvp ones is literally requires you to have three victories in arenas which is actually not so difficult um you can do these in a party or you can solo queue um just don't do ranked don't you know mess up with your rank just do normal victories you're gonna get these super quickly the guild reputation this is basically for doing you know the daily stuff the contracts the guild contracts requires you to just participate in five different ones throughout the week guild resources uh, donation 50 donations you can do like probably 20 per day or something like this those are just for you spending and doing dungeons uh the orbs and then you have resistant contracts and dynamic events participate in five you will most likely participate in way more so those are super easy to do just make sure you do them early on the one that i would you know make sure you do them right away and try to do as much as possible is the dungeons over here because it's 4500 of the currency that you need to spend throughout the week that means that you need to do the dungeons from every single day throughout the week because you get 900 one of the other activities that i can recommend you do um and this is footage from my stream yesterday i was uh, running the uh, dungeons with the guildmates um here the reason why i'm telling you this is because you get tokens that you need to spend not only for your weekly missions that i just showed you but you have uh, you have a chance to get epic gear over here i got uh, an epic wand um and i wasn't very happy about it because i was looking for the dagger i play gs dagger um but yeah unfortunately it was a i wasn't very lucky but the reason why you do this is because you need tokens to spend and you have a chance to get best in slot gear the good thing why you want to do your daily dungeons is because of several reasons now first of all you will get a little bit of materials from these dungeons even if you're not opening the final chest but the main reason why like i said is you want to spend your daily dimensional contract tokens and in return you have a chance to get juicy epic gear if you do the um di more difficult dungeons right you also get uh tokens which is gonna recharge your tokens for the for the open world dungeons which is great as well um and yeah the epic le uh, loot over here is um different in every single dungeon obviously now if you're looking for a specific let's say you're looking for a bow you would go probably to tyrant's isle and grind for the double leg long bow for example or you're looking for the staff he also drops this one if you're looking for uh, the daggers i was looking for the daggers but i got the wand unfortunately in here you will be able to get the epic items that in most cases early on in the game are going to be best in slot for you so plan out the dungeons that you need to grind to get your uh, desired weapons and go and grind them and one one more activity that i just um, it's a funny one but it's actually a really important one is your amitoy expeditions now the amitoy expeditions let's go there very quickly um you teleport to your amitoy house by clicking here next to your map or you can click down here uh, on your amitoy itself and you will transfer over here to the amitoy house all you have to do is click on the map over here and assign your amitoys to certain expeditions well the different expeditions are gonna give you different rewards now i'm already running one so i am doing this one the reason why i'm running this one over here is because first of all i have the boost for all the ammo toys on it and the the very specific reason why i'm doing this is to get salt i really want to get as much as possible salt that i can cook you know meals after cooking is really important in this game so some of the materials are a real big bottleneck so just keep in mind having your ammo toys run those missions over and over again um is really really good what i do is i tend to throughout the day since i'm able to play the game the entire day um i do the missions and expeditions 
once two hours at a time so every two hours i get back except run the mission again except run the mission again and before bed i just queue it up for eight hours i go to bed wake up accept and do this on a routine base now obviously if you don't play that much you want to keep them on eight hours so that you get the maximum rewards let me let me know in the comments below if i actually missed something important um and what would you add to the tips that i'm giving maybe some suggestions because i'm just starting out my you know pro and liberty category over here i would like to improve my videos i have taken a break from my youtube channel for the past three weeks and i haven't uploaded anything but now I decided to come back to uh, making YouTube videos and guides and tutorials, tips and tricks and stuff like that. I do stream on Twitch every single day if you want uh, tune in and I'm happy to meet you there and have a chat. With that being said, good luck with your jobs. I'll see you soon.